leader of the Rice Research Program. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of RDG, Uwemi Tiberia, and Joe Tone, who they, they had previous commitments so they couldn't come to this meeting. CID is looking forward to the implementation of this. One of the main reasons is that through this, CID is getting reconnected with the rice community in Asia and Africa. Let me go back a little bit to 1967 when the Seattle Rice Program was established <coughs> under the leadership of Peter Jennings, who brought with him seed of IR8, IR22, plus seed of about 3,000 million lines from Italy. After two, three years of field testing, IR8 and IR22 got released in Colombia and some other countries in Latin America, and by the early 70s, Singapore, who is a real line from Italy, was released. These three varieties started the Green Revolution in Latin America. They were close to some other varieties that are raised from Latin America, and new varieties like Inga 409 were released. From this one, El Paso 144 was released. Mm -hmm. These two varieties have made great contribution to rice production in southern Brazil. That's what you saw last year when you visited Brazil. So, uh, by the adoption of these improved rice varieties and through improved growth management, rice production in Latin America has more than double. Rice yield has more than double. And right now, there is an economic revolution going on in Latin America, who has been spearheaded by FLAG, Latin American Fund for Latin America. So, unfortunately, in the 90s, she has went through a difficult period. The rice program got out of, I mean to say, it was also uh, reduced. But in 1995, FLAG, the Latin American Fund for Latin America, was established. This gave us a billion room and now we are working in a very nice way. CIAT Rice Program is doing upstream research while FLAG is doing the more conventional breeding and the economic work. Through this partnership, which I think is a good model for some other parts of the region, of the region um, with the same varieties, farmers are getting from one to three tons more of rice with 20 to 30 percent less cost in reduction. So that means that now some countries like, like Uruguay are in a position to compete in the world market. And I think uh, through this, these uh, lessons can be transferred to Asia and to Africa. And I think Greece will facilitate this designation. In terms of genoplasm, our genoplasm has a broad base. It has made up of the brilliant light from Italy, from Africa, especially from IATA in the 70s, and then later on from Guarda, has been brought in land races from Latin America, and even more, wild rice species are coming to the picture. Some of them are from Latin America. So right now, these brilliant lines are doing well in several regions, and it's being shared with Guarda, Italy, and India. And again, this will facilitate the dissemination and sharing this democracy with some other countries, national programs. In terms of capacity building, this is very important. In the 70s and 80s, there were at least 10 scientists from Latin America being trained at Italy. But in the 90s, we lost this opportunity, and now, through this, we can contribute to the formation, education, training, or the new generation of rice scientists that is needed in Latin America to keep the revolution going on and to collaborate 
with partners in Africa, Asia, in Asia. So I think to Greece, we all are women. Thanks to those who, who have uh, given us a leadership. Um, and this has allowed us to give you a good document, a good working plan. Thank you.
least uh, maybe entertaining a few questions uh, that the audience might have on anything related to what you have heard. Who would like to ask a question? Or make a comment? You can do that too.